My name is Jan Dennis. I'm an advanced practice nurse who works with the interventional team at Cardiovascular Consultants. We practice angioplasty at the Mid-America Heart Institute in Kansas City. My role on that team is to follow you through your hospitalization and I'll have the pleasure of dismissing you. What is angioplasty? The goal of angioplasty is to open arteries that are blocked with atherosclerotic plaque. Angioplasty can be performed on the coronary arteries. Those are the arteries that supply blood flow to your heart. Angioplasty can also be performed in the periphery, and now those would be arteries that supply blood flow to your brain, to your kidneys, and to your legs. Uh, angioplasty is performed here in the cardiac catheterization lab. What is coronary artery disease? Coronary artery disease occurs when an atherosclerotic plaque develops in the coronary arteries. Plaque is a complex accumulation of lipid material as well as cellular material, which over time can grow and obstruct the blood flow. Plaque is also referred to as a stenosis or a lesion or a blockage, but all these re terms refer to the process called atherosclerosis. The heart is a muscular organ that pumps oxygen-rich blood to your body. The very first organ that the heart provides blood flow to is the heart itself. Can you describe intervention procedures? The coronary arteries lie on the outside of the heart muscle. Two major coronary arteries supply the blood flow. The right coronary artery supplies flow to the right side of the heart, and the left main, which divides into the left anterior descending and the left circumflex, supply flow to the left pumping chamber and the back side of the heart, respectively. To give you an idea of the size of these arteries, they are about the size of a spaghetti noodle. Here's an example of the cardiac catheterization that is followed in the same setting with a coronary intervention. This includes treatment of the blockage with balloon angioplasty and placement of a drug-coated stent. The first injection of contrast is the right coronary artery. In this individual, the artery is normal. The next injection shows the culprit lesion in the left anterior descending artery near the beginning or proximal portion of the artery. This is 95% occluded with plaque, and on top of the fixed blockage is a platelet-rich thrombus or blood clot. The intervention begins. The first step is to place a flexible wire down the artery. This wire gives the interventionalist a guide for the next catheter, which has a balloon on the tip. The balloon is centered within the blockage and inflated to high atmospheres of pressure literally crushing the blockage against the artery wall and restoring flow. The balloon is removed and a next catheter with a stent is then delivered to the same portion of the vessel. The stent is mounted on a balloon and is deployed into the wall as the balloon is expanded. The balloon is deflated and the stent remains in the artery. We have used a special drug-coated stent. The drug on the stent reduces the chance that there will be too much tissue accumulate as the artery heals, thus reducing the chance of renarrowing of the artery, which is called restenosis. What is angina? Angina is a medical term describing the symptoms that occur when the heart muscle is deprived of blood flow. Angina can occur when the artery is partially obstructed. This is called ischemia, and it's a situation of inadequate supply and demand. An example would be if you have a blockage in your left coronary artery, you walk up a flight of stairs, you might get chest pressure because there's not enough blood flow past the fixed blockage supplying the heart muscle. Angina can also occur when you have an acute rupture of a plaque causing complete obstruction of blood flow, and this is what is involved in a heart attack. What is restenosis? Restenosis is the Achilles heel of the angioplasty procedure. When you place a balloon in an artery, it denudes the smooth muscle cells. The response of the body is to lay down layer upon layer of smooth muscle cells. 
eventually the smooth muscle cells will coat the stent and the stent will become part of the artery wall. Unfortunately, sometimes the healing process goes overboard and you have an overaccumulation of smooth muscle cells which can close the artery down to the point where you have symptoms again. If this occurs, we then have to go back and perform another intervention. With the advent of drug-coated stents, this restenosis has been reduced greatly. What can I expect after angioplasty? Angioplasty restores blood flow to the heart muscle and reduces symptoms. It does not change the course of coronary artery disease. The work we'll do together following your angioplasty will reduce your chance of having a future cardiac event. If we prescribe the right recipe of medications, we can reduce your chance of a cardiac event or death by approximately 75%. The atherosclerotic plaque is very complex, and most people recognize the role of elevated cholesterol in the development of coronary artery disease, but that's not the whole story. Coronary artery disease involves inflammation, blood clot, and the wall of the artery. The medications may have a primary target effect, an example, uh, the statins may decrease your LDL or bad cholesterol, but they also have a secondary effect, and that is to reduce inflammation, reduce the chance of a blood clot, and help the wall of your artery work. This is what I refer to as the triangle. In this corner, inflammation. In this corner, thrombus. And in this corner, endothelial function, or how the wall of your artery works. Following angioplasty, you'll be dismissed on three categories of medications. The first, antiplatelet agents. Platelets are round and usually inert as they circulate in your bloodstream. When they come upon a break in the integrity of the artery wall or a rough surface such as a stent, the platelets become activated and when they become activated, they stick together and this is the damning effect that starts a blood clot. You'll be dismissed on aspirin, which you will take indefinitely, and on Plavix, a sister drug to aspirin, for a certain period of time after the angioplasty to prevent blood clot. The second group of medications are cardioprotective. They reduce the heart rate and the blood pressure, therefore reducing the workload of the heart. The heart won't require as much blood flow to itself, and this is reflected as a energy conservation measure for the heart muscle. It's much like a governor on a truck that can't get above 55 miles an hour. You save gas. If we can keep your heart rate and your blood pressure low, then your heart muscle doesn't require as much blood flow and you reduce the workload on the heart. The third category of medications that you'll be dismissed on would be medications to lower your cholesterol. Uh, these are your statins and your omega-3 fish oils will be trying to get goal LDL cholesterol below 70. Research tells us that if we can get your LDL cholesterol below 70 that we can prevent the progression of coronary artery disease and hopefully cause regression and stabilize plaque. A diet that is rich in omega-3 fish oils and omega-3 fish oil supplement will be an important cornerstone of your therapy following coronary intervention. I refer back to the triangle associated with coronary artery disease. That would be endothelial function, thrombus, inflammation. In more general terms, blood clot, how the wall of the artery works, and inflammation. And the omega-3 fish oil has an incredible impact on the triangle.